What's going on? Mike here with 200 Test Drive, and today I want to talk about E85 and methanol injection. So E85 and methanol injection, you've probably heard these terms thrown around anytime someone's trying to make power. E85 and methanol are very similar and used to pretty much accomplish the same goal. They are both used to mitigate the risk that an uh, internal combustion engine will knock when you increase the boost pressure e of either a turbocharger or a supercharger. Okay, that's great, but what is knock and why don't we want our engines to knock? Knock is when the combustion of the air fuel mixture happens without being initiated by the spark plug and happens pretty much outside of the normal flame front that would be created by the the spark plug. The air fuel mixture is meant to be ignited by the spark plug only and happen at a precise time during the piston's stroke. During a knock event, pockets of the air fuel mixture start to combust outside of the normal flame front created by the spark plug. This abnormal combustion is usually caused by excess heat and pressure within the cylinder. So what makes knock so dangerous? Well, the instantaneous combustion caused by the knock event creates a shock wave that can spike the internal pressure of the cylinder beyond its limits, pretty much damaging all the mechanical components of the cylinder. And if the knock is bad enough or or if many knock events happen within a short period of time, this can pretty much lead to a complete engine failure. All right, so now that we know that knock is the enemy, how do we prevent it? So in order to prevent knock, we need to either increase the octane of the fuel, reduce the temperature of the cylinder, or reduce the pressure of the cylinder. Most people trying to make power are trying to increase the cylinder pressure via turbocharger or supercharger, so reducing the cylinder pressure really isn't what we're looking for. So we're pretty much left with either raising the octane or decreasing the cylinder temperature. Increasing the octane can only get you so far because most pumps only have 91 or 93 available. Then after that, you're looking at getting into race fuels, which are very expensive and not the friendliest to certain components of the exhaust system. However, increasing octane and lowering the cylinder temperatures is where E85 and methanol injection start becoming really attractive. Methanol injection has been around for a while, but E85 is a kind of a newcomer to the scene. E85 and methanol are very similar in their characteristics. I mean, they are both alcohols. As alcohol, they have a higher latency of heat than gasoline. This means they require more energy to vaporize, so they get that energy by pulling more heat out of the cylinder. So when E85 or methanol is injected into the cylinders, they pretty much pull out more heat, pulling the cylinder down. The cooling effect of alcohol you can feel for yourself. If you ever put a dab of rubbing alcohol on your skin, you can feel that it it feels colder than if you put water or anything else in your skin. So let's talk about E85. E85 is essentially cheap race gas. It has an equivalently high octane rating and it also has much better cooling characteristics than normal pump gasoline. Combine those two characteristics together and you have a very effective fuel for combating knock. Now, E85 isn't perfect. It has the propensity to absorb water. It also has about 30% less energy than gasoline, so it's gonna take you 30% more E85 to match a similar output provided by gasoline. Since E85 can absorb water and it requires such a high flow, if your fuel system wasn't built to run E85, you'll likely have to either change out some components in the system or redo the whole system completely, which can get really expensive really fast. E85 also isn't available everywhere, so if you don't have a pump local, you might have to either buy drums of it, or if you do have a pump local, you might have to plan out where you go if you don't have a flex fuel set up in your car, just so you don't run out of the range of your E85. So what about methanol injection? Well, methanol injection achieves the same higher octane and cooling effects as E85, but it does it at a predetermined either boost level or RPM level. So this means your car will run mostly on gasoline and only need the methanol on high boost settings where the knock suppressing characteristics of methanol are really needed. That's great, but this is also the reason why you want to spend the money on a quality system that has all the fail safes in place because you don't want this system failing and pretty much blowing your engine. So if your current system is not set up for 85 and you don't want to go through the whole hassle of converting your whole system to run E85, methanol injection might be the option for you. E85 and methanol injection are both great options to extract the most power out of your car. It's gonna be up to you which one is better for your application. So if your current fuel system isn't set up for E85 or you don't have E85 
anywhere in your area, it might be better to go off with the methanol injection system, but if you do have E85 in your area, it might be worth it to make the necessary changes to your fuel system to run it because it is a great fuel. I'm currently running it in my Toyota Supra and pretty much from the boost level you can run on pump gas to the boost level you can run with E85, there's a 200 horsepower gain just in the ability to run higher boost because of the fuel. So I hope this video clear up some of the differences between E85 and methanol injection. I mean, they're pretty similar in what they do. Whatever one works better for your application, that's going to be up to you. I mean, you can always run both of them. But that's going to be it for this one. I'll catch you on the next one.